So, I'm a biologist, got the degree and everything, and I love Dungeon Meshy, Delicious and Dungeon. Show of the year, I'm telling you. My absolute favorite thing about the show, which I must rant about and rave about to any person who will listen, is the biological accuracy of all of the monsters portrayed in the show. When Lyo said, you can tell the difference between males and females based on the face of the coin, I had to get my friend that I was watching with to stop the show so I could spend five minutes explaining to him that, oh my god, you can do that with crabs in real life. This is crazy. I can't believe how accurate this is. I'm losing my mind. When they got to the episode about farming, I was so excited, since environmentally conscious farming is something that means a lot to me. And as ever, Senshi does not disappoint. When Senshi explains his unique lifestyle in the dungeon, there are many who think he's crazy. The prevailing knowledge is that the dungeon is completely inhospitable. However, Senshi repeatedly proves that this is not the case. He starts farming. And in a way that is specifically tailored to how the dungeon operates. By using the golems, he has created a natural pesticide that doesn't hurt the plants or bring any undue harm to the dungeon by spraying it with chemicals. Not that there is any evidence of chemical pesticides in the dungeon, but with all that magic that Marseille throws around, it's basically the same thing. Senshi also tends to the golem farms very consciously. He explains how he rotates crops to prevent nutrient depletion, which has been a foundational part of sustainable farming practices for centuries. Particularly in the use of the Three Sisters method for farming done by indigenous peoples of the United States. Senshi adopts a similar approach. He plants the crops in a way that helps all of the other subsequent harvests by increasing nutrient uptake, improving the well-being of the microbes within the soil, and by reducing the loss of nitrogen in the soil. One of the most important nutrients for plants is nitrogen. It's actually a very hard chemical for basically any organic life form to take into its system. So instead of getting nitrogen directly, plants in particular have developed a process of fixing nitrogen, where they transform it from the unusable N2 state into a usable organic form of nitrate or nitrite. Nitrogen is used in a plethora of plant physiological processes, but most importantly for photosynthesis. Nitrogen is actually the main reason why one would use fertilizer on their crops. And as we see in Dungeon Meshi, Senshi is not afraid to get fertilizer from anywhere. Honestly, good for him. It's another way that Senshi proves over and over again that the best way to approach the dungeon is as if it were a living, breathing ecosystem. He sees himself as a part of the never-ending cycle of eat or be eaten, and as long as he cares for the dungeons on its own terms, it will continue to feed him. This perspective of the dungeon as a living ecosystem that can be tended to and used for nutrients is one that's particular to Lyos' party. And we see what happens to those who don't respect the dungeon as an ecosystem. Kabru and his party, by contrast, have to bring down food with them from the surface. This extra food they're carrying weighs them down, making it harder for them to both spend extended periods of time in the dungeon and also makes it harder for them to fight off the perilous dungeon monsters that constantly attack them. Worst of all, it's pack food which doesn't have all the nutrients required to live the highly active life that's necessary for dungeon dwellers. Not to mention health improvements that a fuller diet can give a person. Each adventuring party that decides to stick to a pack meal only diet is putting themselves at an active disadvantage compared to a party that gets all of their food from within the dungeon. Like at the start of the series, when the whole reason they lose Fallen in the first place is because they were too hungry to fight the dragon properly. With proper dungeon-fueled meals, sourced ethically, they probably would have walked away from that encounter alive. Sorry, Fallen, hope you're getting some good snacks in the dragon belly. Point being, Dungeon Meshi does a great job of portraying how environmentally aware farming and food harvest practices are a great way to get a delicious dungeon meal in a way that ensures the ecosystem continues to pump out crazy good food like holy water sorbet and monster meat hot pot. If you enjoyed this little foray into dungeon ecology, I guess, in the way of, like, farming practices, <laughs> by, by way of farming, um, feel free to check out some of the other videos I've made for uh, my class project for Biology in the Age of Technology. You'll find them in the end card and linked in the description. Thank you!